Hi everyone, I'm Natalia, I'm a photographer in Canada and my studio based in Surrey, uh, Surrey of BC. What is Canada? I already said, whatever, who cares? Um, I am natural and studio light photographer and prior I concentrated on newborns. But actually today my tutorial is going to be about uh, natural light, what's available light and studio light. Uh, the first, if you start a new my photography, you're always concerned about what light I'm going to shoot, what equipment I need to, I need to buy, and this is blow everyone's mind. Uh, we're going to start from very easy and uh, available. You don't need to invest anything, which is uh, available light. I'm lucky. Uh, my studio has a huge window, which is one meter eighty centimeters by one meter ninety centimeters and it's a south, I always have bright light, but if I don't have one, because Vancouver, Vancouver weather is not, not really predictable, sometimes you have overcast and you have this weather that's actually changing constantly, I do shoot with a studio light, which I cover, I'm gonna cover a little bit later. How I use my uh, uh, available light, which is a window light, I do have a uh, ripstop, which is actually nylon, but if you don't have one, you can purchase, I think, in Amazon. And it's a ripstop, I have blue tint in it, which is help reduce uh, warmth, which you get with the uh, sunlight, which is sunlight, I think, uh, temperature around, what, 50s, uh, 3500, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you need to like, tint it down. Uh, sometimes I even dye my fabric with a little bit of pink in it, which is going to give you like nice warmth in the baby skin because you get all those different sort of colors in the baby skin. They can be blue, they can be pink. And I find out for, in my likes and my liking, I like that uh, warmth in the skin. If you see my images, they're really warm and kind of have that uh, yellow tint in it. Uh, first of all, I have this um, nylon, and um, recently I added that curtain, what is that I purchased on AliExpress, and it's very cheap, and it's um, stop like that's harsh light. I really like it. Like I basically, I suggest to use that too. If you do have a lots of light, it's not always good because if you do have a lots of light, you can get that flat light, which is not gonna uh, showcase the baby features, and it's gonna be just all kind of you know. I'll probably the, show the images later how it's gonna look if you don't have that um, enhancing light, which actually enhances the baby's features. And I do cover some of my window with a dark curtain because I do have too much light and I move that curtain accordingly of the light because light is moving constantly. It's not always falls from the same direction. Um, that's about it. If I do need to cover some light from the above, for some pictures, I do the same. Um, right now I'm going to show on the baby how the light falls and how I work. Uh, first of all, if I, I have a little Paloma shell stand which I actually adore. My, uh, my husband put the wheels on it, basically I can roll it around my studio which is very comfortable. Uh, I already placed the baby here and um, I do, if you see, I do have a deep space in here. It's not window all the way to the back of my studio. I do have some space. I think it's around a meter and a half. What gives me a room to move my beam back for in the studio and create that shadow in the back because I don't really like when it's all the light falls uh, um, all over my beam bag and on my baby and I don't have that uh, focus on a subject, um, I do like emphasize who I'm shooting, which is a baby. And if I do move my beam back closer, uh, you get that light, even I have a natural light, beautiful natural light, it falls all over my backdrop, which is I don't really want. Um, if I go back, you see the lights here getting darker, which is uh, this, which is I, want, I really want, and you see the light right now falls just on the baby. And remember, if you place the baby, if you want to forget of the baby, see, uh, you have to remember the baby always need to be facing the window. I mean, like the crown face uh, uh, turned towards the window and the lights will fold really nicely and create the beautiful shadows. And here you can uh, actually achieve two looks, it depends on your liking, as always. You can place the baby. I do have a posing ball underneath right now. 
and you can pose the baby, which is like, I think it's a classic way when you have that light, which is goes like shadow, light, highlight, shadow, highlights. It's like a waterfall light, I will call. Or I can place the baby and you're gonna get that beautiful light, what is I call like a split lighting or the side light. When you lift the baby hat and you lift it a little bit right in here on that spot and you see the, the shadow is gonna go on that side. You're gonna have little highlight in here and you have more light on that side and it's gonna be in the shadow and you're gonna have all your background in the shadow. I will take a few images and you will see how it look like. I do not shoot with a Sony. <laughs> this camera belongs to my friend. I do shoot with a Nikon 40X and I really adore that camera, but my Nikon today working as a video camera. Uh, therefore, I'm gonna use the Sony. Don't ask me how do I like it or not. It's the first time I use just to show you the um, What I'm doing and I am gonna photograph my baby you're gonna see that picture what I'm talking about right now You're gonna see that light on the one side of the baby face and you're gonna see the glints of the light like a kiss of light in the other cheek which is beautiful and I think it's uh, highlights the baby features, which is this is what I what I want Second, you can, like I said, you can lift the baby face up and you see my light comes from that side. If I want, I can turn my beam back and I'm gonna look for that light and make sure it's always highlight that side. I would never turn the baby face towards the lights. This is exactly what I said when you get the flat light, when everything, and if light light is not bad, if you photograph in a human like me, like myself, if you see the all the selfies we're doing on the Instagram, and if you're over 40 like me, you always face in light that reduce the wrinkles, but don't forget we all have uh, really good features, eyebrows, nose, eyelashes, we put the lipsticks, baby don't have that. If you do that, if you fit, the baby will face the light, you will just lose all of it. It's gonna be just a flat canva, nothing good about it, in my personal opinion. Okay, for this particular shot, I need to be a little bit higher from the baby. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna turn around. And, and I need to make sure the baby, and this is gonna be my other shot. Okay, and I just should really wide op open, like 1.4, 1.8, mid camera 1.8. That's gonna be another position towards light when you're placing the baby this way. And another another way to place the baby, it's uh, it does look like if the baby facing like uh, it's up lighting, which is not really good for the babies, never do that. But if you turn the head up, Basically, you will get the same look. Basically, the baby still gonna uh, not face light. Still, you're still gonna be uh, get that side lighting, which is like uh, split lighting. You're gonna have the shadows in here, and you're gonna have a highlight in here. Just make sure your light is not coming from the the, the bottom of the baby. Basically, like up lighting, which is not really good. What I'm gonna do for that light, I will turn that beam back a little bit this way, and this how I'm gonna photograph. And it's look like the baby face, the feet facing um, the, the light. But if you see the baby head, it's a kind of pretty much the same from the beginning, just a little bit different. And I like this. And another way you can use your, um, you can use your uh, available light with this window light. You can totally twist your beam back and use a backlighting. For the backlighting, I need to turn my bean bag, okay, and move it towards the window. And for that particular shot, I need to put that down. Okay, so I do that. Just make sure you don't have any wrinkles. Take that. I do use a little bean to lift the baby head. And this is another way to use a available light. 
Hello, baby. Okay, perfect. Got that habit to look. Okay. Perfect. Okay, you can do. That's good enough. Perfect. That's the shot. This is a three, like basically we looked for uh, three different uh, ways to shoot with your available light. That's pretty much everything what I can say, really quick review for if you wanna use your light and it's like the cheapest way. Uh, you don't need to pay anything. You don't need to invest in a studio light and uh, this is how, it, how it's worked. Yeah, it's really, it's really, probably gonna be really hard if you do not have a really good window or it's a small window or you trail in the client home and you don't know what they're gonna deal with. And if you do have a, such a problem, we're gonna move to the studio light. I will show what, um, what studio light I use, what my settings are and how to place your light uh, in order to get great image uh, with a newborn baby. This is how I said, uh, second part of my video gonna be uh, gonna cover the topic about a studio light. I set the Einstein light, which is a, you can purchase if you are a photographer based in Canada, US, and maybe some European country are selling those ones. And uh, the other light I do have, it's a Prophoto B10, which is, in my opinion, the best light, but it's kind of pricey. I'm just gonna tell you the difference between uh, Einstein and the Prophoto. It, yeah, it's there, it's still more lights available. You can purchase um, Allen Home R RX1, Godex, those lights are perfect for newborn photography. Uh, you need to look, uh, to get the perfect lighting, you need to look for the, uh, ability to um, make your light as low as you can uh, basically make sure it's not very powerful and which is Einstein B10 any home RX1 and Godox are perfect for that uh, for that matter okay I'll look I'll show you the Prophoto B10 first and later I will cover everything about Einstein and how to use it to photograph the newborns Okay, in B10, which is I feel I, I like, it's a everything digital and you don't have um, any, too many dials, you know, you always lose, I'm, I'm always lost if you have too many of uh, those dials or buttons. And as you see, it not, nothing here, which is Einstein that has a, a light and modern light, it's all visible. And I actually broke my matte glass right now. And it's like very fragile and if you, photographer who travel home to home I think it's kind of hard to keep it um, in a good shape I broke it probably multiple times and I know photographers who even forgot to uh, take the cover before they shooting and they melt it all that's a lot so thinking with the, this light here you don't have anything it's perfect and if I turn on that light as you see it's work without the cord it's a it works on the battery which is awesome if you want to move the light really quick and you have you don't have a power outlet which is amazing or you shoot in location if you go outside the battery lasts a long time and as you see in my light right now it's blue which is I do have opportunity or possibility here to make that light warm which is 56 uh, or 35 kelvins if I'm not mistaken yeah or 56 kelvin which is a cold light like you see it's blue light and if I do use my Einstein or different light I have I still have an LMB but not for newborns I can set this as a constant light just to enhance my models if I do photograph with parents if you shot with the studio light and you see this dark shadow behind the parents and you don't like it this I use just to uh, get that extra light and don't have the dark shadow behind the parents shots if we, you know what I'm talking about and here you can make it yellow you can make it blue and that uh, light goes up to 10 and it's as low as one I never use actually one even I shoot 1.4 usually my light sets on 2.3 2.9 depends if I shoot um, with a backlighting the parents shot you know that's the one we have a white bag white background and the parents kind of a profile i up my light to 7.1 somewhere between 6.5 to 7.1 
and this is uh, perfect for that matter. I very, I very like, and it's very light. It's very light, but it's kind of pricey. I think that's $2,500 just for the light, but you still need to purchase a, a trigger that sits on your camera. But if you do have money to spare, I highly recommend to invest in the Pro Photo. Okay, that's, I'm gonna put that light away. And right now we're gonna talk about Einstein. The Einstein has uh, the low setting is 2.5. And don't forget if you if you shoot with 2.5, you set your uh, your flash to 2.5. Uh, your modeling light need to be uh, as as high as you can put it on because you do not have other light, and you do need some light to focus on a baby and see your lighting. Uh, the modeling light. Uh, give you opportunity to see where your shadows falls and you see clearly see how the baby look in the picture. And other question, do I need to cover the other light I have? Like right now I covered my window with a black curtain. Uh, what's the, when you need to cover it, how to, how I will understand I need to cover that uh, extra light I have. Uh, what you can do, you just get your camera, uh, put your settings, usually with the flash, it's uh, your shutter speed gonna be around 1 or 20th in your whatever aperture you shoot, like I shoot with 1.4 to 1.8. Your eyes, uh, my eyes are usually somewhere in 100 to 120, depends what I'm shooting. And you turn on all the light, you turn on your studio light, and wherever you have available light, if the window, you just wanna find out, do I need to cover any extra light? And you just take one photo. If you see in that photo, any light, that's gonna reflect on you, that's gonna affect your image. If your image comes black, as a pitch black, that means you do need to cover extra light if it makes sense to you. Right now, I'm not gonna do that, but I think it's very clear. I'm just gonna show you, oh, it's pretty dark probably right now. Uh, this when I need to take the photograph. With the settings, I will shoot my baby. And you examine that image if it's completely black, that means you do need to cover any light you have. If you do have light, sometimes it's somewhere in the background, maybe a glimpse from the baby, cover it. Uh, that's about it. And next step, how to leave your baby. Here's every, so simple. With the studio lights, it's so easy. It's predictable. Your light is set on 5600 Kelvins, which is like I uh, like about Pro Photo. It's so consistent with the light. And it's particularly when I shoot with 1.4, 1.6 on the white backdrops, the Pro Photo holds is amazing. On the highlight, on the highlights, it's all it don't have that plastic look, which is Einstein has and diff other different lights. This way I choose to shoot with a Pro Photo. But if you do not shoot with 1.4, like very, very wide uh, open aperture, don't mind, just get the Einstein or any Chrome. Any Chrome, you should probably shoot with 2.5, 2.8. It's really hard to shoot wide open. About my, uh, I forgot to tell about my umbrella. This is PLM 85 inch, oh, 85 or 84? <laughs> 64 inches? I think it's 64. I'm, I'm not, it's 135 centimeters. I know that for a fact. Um, it's not big umbrella. I do not have a big one. I don't need one. And I don't like when it's, I have too much light because I do like that shot. I, li I like shadows of my images. And my umbrella has this cover. It's a silver inside. It's a, it's a silver, but it, uh, it's a white transparent umbrella with a black cover with a silver inside and diffuser, which is in the front. That's it. I have a, a stand, which is like not the one I usually shoot with. My stand goes all the way down because when I shoot something down on the floor, I, I need to make sure my light can go all the way to the floor. Uh, that's and I have my trigger and receiver or receiver and the trigger on the camera. That's about it. And if I wanna, like how I lead my baby, what, where does the light need to be set? This is all different too. Uh, basically, you treat it as a window. If you, if you had a window, how I would place the baby accordingly my light source. And here comes, you just need to look where you wanna shuttle your backdrop. You can move your light closer in here, basically. Yeah, this is what I would probably shoot. Sound like this but I would put my light more, oh, more down. Sound like this. And okay, you can see me there. 
Okay, I'm just gonna get this some like this, make sure you can see. Here we go. You can place your light, which actually goes all the way, almost to, all the way to the end to my light stand. You're gonna have more light towards your background, which is if you like that look of the images. If you want just light on the baby, you should move your light pretty much almost in the one third of your, uh, your stand. It's right in here, it's almost on the baby. You see, I have a little bit of tilt on my light, just a slide forward towards the baby. But I never put the light, I never rotate this way because I want my light like, I would say kissing the baby, just flows all the way through the baby right in here because if I do turn my light to the baby, I get too much light and I'm not gonna have that perfect, beautiful shadow on the other side of the baby face. That's about it. This is how I set my light. And if you want to photograph with um, backlighting, it's kind of the same. You just move your light all the way to the other side of your beam back stand, raise it up and tilt towards, tilt forward a little bit to make sure you get um, the light on the other side of the baby. This is all just the practice. I will take the photograph right now with the, my studio light to show you. And then you, as you see, the baby plays just the same way like I shot a little bit earlier with the natural light. Okay. Perfect. Right now I'm shooting on one 200 minute aperture or my aperture 2.5, shutter speed 1 200 and ISO 100. That's all about it. I wanna say about the studio light and the natural light. I hope you enjoy those videos and it will help you to choose whatever light you wanna work with. And if you do have any questions, I hope we're gonna have interactive chat or something in the video where I can answer your questions. Uh, I hope you enjoy that and see you in different in next videos. Bye-bye.